Director of SiliconAngle.com, and we are the Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We go where the action is, and the action is at Oracle Open World in San Francisco. The, the center of all the action, not so much innovation because it's Oracle, but uh, a lot of innovation around Oracle, and uh, I'm excited to be here. We're here all day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day-to-day -day coverage. Again, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, and we'd like to welcome in Jack O'Brien, who is the Senior Director of Marketing at Violin Memory, a flash uh, storage array company. Jack, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, Dave. Yeah, Thanks, good, John. To see, good to see you, and uh, been the hot topic, John, of, of the show here, at least one of the, the two big ones, Cloud and Flash. So Dave, so we, are love, we love Flash. Obviously, we've been following the Flash from the very beginning, and then obviously Fusion, private company, it goes supernova, violin comes out of fusion, Don and the team uh, start a company. And then all of a sudden it's like the craziest trend, mainstream, Oracle validating Flash in a big way. Uh, Jack, you guys are at violin. Um, you're setting the standard now in an area um, that is uh, to be explored on the back end with Flash. Fusion's obviously in a different position. Uh, both emerging companies, you guys are killing it from what we find and what we're reporting uh, out in SiliconANGLE. Um, so first, my first question, well first, congratulations. <laughs> um, so my question is, Oracle is embracing Flash. Obviously Larry Ellison on uh, his keynote Sunday night, going all in on Flash, talking a big game, doing what Larry does best, taking credit for all the trends he created, and Flash <laughs> is one of them. So, um, uh, not, which is the, the case. So you guys got to be pretty excited about that. So comment on one, his ringing endorsement of Flash, and how does that fit in to the real world right now as, as companies are, are clearly moving to Flash in the architecture? Yeah, John, I thought you made a really interesting comment where you said, you know, Larry has endorsed Flash. This is probably the third or fourth time that he's done that. Um, this is definitely one of his more emphatic times that he's ever done that. He came out and made an announcement around Oracle Exadata that basically said, the most important and new thing in this product is that it's got a lot of flash in it. And you're going to run all of your databases in memory. And we've been saying the same thing for, for a number of years, right? Um, my favorite quote from, from Larry's keynote was, well, disk drives are becoming passe. Now, becoming can mean a lot of things, but certainly it looks like you know, we're ahead of the curve in terms of where the storage industry is going. And so that's what we're focused on. Enterprise storage arrays, designed for the way that storage should be used, which is a shared network service that's highly available for your primary data. Well, tape has been going away for years. It's still the, the, uh, the last kind of area, it's kind of the media space. But yeah, disk is moving into backup, flash is coming in prime time, and, but it's changing the architecture you know, that people are used to using storage for. So there's an old way and new way. So describe for the folks out there, make sense of it in a very high level, old way and now the new way. And right. Flash if we think about disk drive technology, it's been around for decades, and that whole time it's getting pummeled by Moore's Law, right? And so we need something to catch up and close that gap between there. And so what we're giving you know, CIOs is, is the ability to close that one big gap that allows them to virtualize their entire data center. It allows them to put all their business critical apps doing things in real time with the reliability that they need. It allows them to take advantage of the various big data-like initiatives to get the most out of their data, to translate that into information in real time. So Jack, I wonder if you could talk about um, Violin's approach uh, to solving that problem. So essentially, what you just described, if I understand it, is taking advantage of a customer's existing processes and dropping in you know, this new system, this new all-flash system, to speed things up. Is it Conceptually, that simple? Well, conceptually, we don't want to disrupt their existing processes, their existing applications, and so the product we've designed does exactly that. It fits into your existing architecture. But where it's different is the approach we've taken with Flash versus where, what others have taken with Flash. We've designed a system uh, literally from the chip up, you know, starting with our Flash partner, Toshiba, where we've designed our own Flash cards, and we were able to aggregate those in a very intelligent and dense way to ensure that you get the best performance and the best reliability out of a single system that is now a viable alternative to something from a top tier storage supplier like an EMC or an IBM or even an Oracle. So help us cut through this and squint through the, the sea of flash competitors. Right. I mean, they're everywhere. Um, but somehow you guys have merged. You got a cool name, so that strikes. Um, but you also seem to be doing very well. How is it that, that you're 
being able to separate from the pack? Well, it's, it's tricky to balance kind of these three, the three legs of the stool for enterprise storage requirements. You need to have the performance. Obviously, that's the big advantage that Flash brings to the table. But you also have to have the availability because people do not trust their highly valuable business critical data on something that may or may not be around or, go, or lose their data. And the third is you got to get the economics right. And so balancing all three of those things is very difficult. And our approach to architecting the system from the ground up solves those problems extremely well. So talk, talk about that more, maybe add some color to that. What do you mean by architecting the system from the ground up? Sounds good, what does it mean practically speaking? Well I can contrast it to other approaches to solid state devices. Great. Right, you, you're, you're, you've got a MacBook in front of you which has a solid state disk drive. No spinning disk in there baby. Nope. And uh, <laughs> that's one way, that's one approach to, to, right. to deploy Flash. Yep. Um, there are other ways, a common approach is to just take a, a disk drive form factor and put flash drives in there. It looks like a fast disk drive, but you're using it in somewhat of a legacy environment in terms of the controllers and the software and the things that are wrapped around it. If you architect from the chip to the card to the controllers to the system with very intelligent software and a lot of IP in the hardware and the software, you can design something that's highly optimized at the systems level. That's an argument that Larry would even make at the Exadata level. So, uh, <laughs> so talk, talk about, you talk about the software, you talk about software a lot. Specifically, what does the software do? Well, at, at one level, it starts with the data protection and the parallelization of data. So we have our own um, unique proprietary rate algorithms that are you know, patented that ensure that data is protected, that there's parity, that in the event of a failure, you're not going to lose any data. Um, it it complements the hardware portion of that high availability piece so that you can have full redundancy, hot swappability, um, complete confidence that you're not going to have component failure lead to loss of data. Okay, so essentially you guys are systems guys. We are. End to end, to a Abs lot of software ab innovation. Absolutely, it's not, it's not a matter of taking off the shelf components or other commodity components, cobbling them together and wrapping them in, in, in some sort of envelope that you know, looks like you know something you're used to. So, compare and contrast you guys to Fusion IO. I know um, you guys are completely different companies, but you know you guys kind of fall in that same genre. There's a little history there with Fusion and Violin, but uh, you guys are the upstarts. Obviously, they went public. You guys have huge valuation on your last financing, so you're knocking on the door of public offering, um, as we speculate. Uh, no official announcement yet. Um, so you want to, <laughs> don't want to get you fired, but uh, you know if you want nobody's to ever been fired for coming on the cube. You, I mean, not that's directly. A, not yet, so comment on your <laughs> IPO, um, and uh, no, but seriously, uh, compare and contrast Fusion. People see Fusion, they see they understand what that is. They've been on the cube. Uh, talk about violin. Well, it, it in a lot of ways it is an apples and oranges comparison, right? They're they're not building a primary storage array. They're building a card that fits into a server that accelerates the data that's local to that server. It's very different than enterprise class shared network storage. So that, that's really the fundamental difference that's going on. Now, is the underlying technology Flash? Yes, absolutely. And Flash can do a lot of things, and there's a lot of different use cases where you might want to use Flash. But while they're accelerating a single server, is very different profiles for availability, for shareability, compared to what we're doing, which is designed for shared network storage. So talk about the performances, because we've done some kicking in the tires with some folks out there who have been playing with violin, and uh, in large production enterprise environments like SAP and others, where you know, we're hearing you know, feedback that it's literally smoking the doors off the benchmark. So can you flesh that out and just share with us some use cases where you guys are crushing it on the benchmark side? Yeah, I mean, a, a big part of our business revolves around making databases go faster. Um, batch and OLTP. If people can turn around a job that used to take 12 hours into under one hour, that's straight to the bottom line. Um, last week, Cisco and Oracle released a benchmark, uh, the latest TPC world record, using violin on the back end. It's actually a trend we're seeing. Anytime somebody wants to create uh, or produce a, a, a TPCC benchmark, they look to violin to be the back end storage. Um, here's a great use case. Uh, company that does all of the uh, airline seat pricing. So this is a company called Pros, that's one of our customers. Their job is to take every flight, every class of service on that flight, and every seat on that flight, and optimally price it for an airline. If you can do that in a really fast period of time, 
you're going to make millions of extra dollars by optimally pricing your inventory. So people have been, you know, I've talked to VCs going way back in the day, oh, uh, Flash is like two years ago. Oh, Flash, it's just a caching layer. Now, damn good caching layer when you look at what cash, uh, Flash can do. Um, what else is there outside of that, that uh, mystique? Because obviously now, two years later, you're seeing startups, you're seeing a lot more broader, real adoption around Flash. Uh, explain for the folks out there, what, what's beyond Flash? I mean, what, what is Flash beyond just caching? Well, I think that gets back to the point we were talking about earlier where Larry was saying that you know, disk drives are becoming passe. And what that means is something's going to replace the disk drive as the primary storage layer. And that means you need to architect a solution that can stand up to the rigor that companies like EMC and IBM and HP and NetApp have been delivering for that long. And that's the approach that Violin has taken, and that's why you're seeing a lot of uptick in the enterprise as, as, we've, as we've been talking about. So why not take that one step further? I, I, I got to have the conversation now. And, <laughs> and, and, and write the applications to do things like atomic rights um, and totally change the performance profile. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things that we can do going down the road. Um, I think that one of the things that's important is when you're delivering a new technology that can offer such a positive impact, you really want it to fit seamlessly within the existing infrastructure, especially when it comes to storage and people's data. I've right? called you guys the data domain of Flash. And well, like, hey, drop I mean, it in, don't change the processes. It was go. really important for us, for example, to work with um, IBM SVC and EMC VPlex, because those are you know, tools and frameworks that enterprise companies have been using to manage their data and they're very confident in them. We don't want to tell them, yeah, you can't use that, or our new, our new startup software is better than theirs. You know, that's, that's not the road to success in protecting somebody's primary enterprise. Well, I think they can both be successful. I mean, right. there's a big market out there, Exactly, right? exactly. And, uh, we've seen the, one of the, I guess up to now, about a year and a half, two years ago, one of the greatest wealth creations in storage history with 3PAR and Compellent and Data yeah. Domain. And, and um, do you think Flash will be as big? Well, we're talking about, what, a 30, 40 billion dollar opportunity, and there's a huge, huge percentage of that that's um, primary storage that can benefit from running faster. And so I think that there's a, there's a big opportunity so there. So from a spending standpoint, do you expect 10 years from now more to be spent on flash than on spinning disk? Um, I don't know where the tipping point will be from when you know flash to to disk kind of well, I went out 10 years, so that's kind of a long but, time. But but here's so let me let me answer that question this way. What we're seeing is um, we we don't necessarily come in and tell somebody who bought you know some storage system um, six months ago you got to get rid of it. But as an enterprise is looking for a new project, maybe they have a huge virtualization initiative. Maybe they've got a big data initiative. Maybe they're looking to um, move some 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 critical business apps. It, it, you know, to, to you know, some other line of make other, another line of business successful. They're saying, okay, we're either refreshing or starting new. They're all looking at Flash. Right, right. I mean, you talked about the MacBook yep. know, a while ago. I mean, just as a consumer, John, I'm, I'm never going back to spinning disk. You're a relatively new. Well, there's no doubt, user. Dave. There's no doubt in my mind that Flash is going to replace. Disk. It just absolutely has to happen. Certainly um, for active data, right? There's no question. No, no, I, I'm saying, I think Pure Storage came on the cube and said, you know, he didn't say storage is passe, he said, it's a drug, going to replace it. So yeah. EMC could say all they want about, okay, you know, a small bit of flash. This is the, this is the road that we're on. Yeah, so yeah the whole no, adage, a little bit of flash goes a long way. It's, yeah, that's today. Your so, tweet was, well, what about a lot of flash? Yeah, so you know, <laughs> all the top companies that are need performance, whether it's Blacko search engine, number three search engine, or whoever, they're all putting flash where it, where it matters the most. It's expensive now from a unit cost, but in the aggregate scheme of things, when you can change your infrastructure OPEX and drive revenue, that's, it's a small, different cost of ownership equation. In, in three to five years, we're going to see flash dominated in the primary storage layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no doubt, no doubt about it. And I think, I think what's exciting to me is that, you know, we brought this up in the cube at VMworld, is the software developers and the, the DevOps folks, however you want to look at it, ops, dev, DevOps, and or software guys, when you have that much, quote, memory to work with, I'm not going to say RAM, but you know, it's not all state flash, you have a lot of different dynamics going on as a developer. And I think that's going to be interesting to watch. I think this will be an absolute explosion for the DevOps community and the data center and then in the, the big data infrastructure. I mean, software, it's, Dave, it's software-led infrastructure. 
It is. It's a term we've been playing around, and essentially, I wonder if you could you could comment on this, Jack. I mean, essentially, we're seeing, you know, the the last spinning bottleneck, the mechanical, yep. electrical mechanical bottleneck disappearing, um, and. We have talked about new architectures that need to come forth where all active data will be on, on flash, multiple tiers, at the server level, at the cache level, the all flash, even within the array, certainly hybrid arrays, but the dominant position you know, being, being flash, the primary storage, as yeah. John just predicted. Exactly. Yeah. What I want to know is, give, can, give us some more color around the benchmarks, because again, you know, I don't think people can truly get their arms around how much advantage there is. So you have any like anecdotal like data, like you know, application, you know, an SAP application takes you know five minutes to run. Now it's five seconds. Is there? I mean, I'm looking for order of magnitude because we're seeing those kinds of. I mean, I made those numbers up, but just to compare to five minutes, five seconds. I mean, that's a notable you know fall out of your chair experience. Right. So do you? Have well, any, I mean, any so data on you that. You know, without you know without talking about specific customers, we we can see scenarios where we go in for a test with a customer, and it's okay. Let's just see how the array can do if we hook it up to our existing application and. You know, without any tuning, we can double the speed of something. Um, you can look at how Cisco decided that their performance benchmark that they were going to highlight, you know, a couple days before Oracle Open World started, was run on violin on the back end. Uh, when we were at VMworld just three weeks ago in this in this very conference center, VMworld got on stage in their keynote and said, "Hey, we just put a single VM doing uh, a million IOPS. Guess who storage was on the back end for that one?" So. You can kind of see the trend here. If you want to get the best <laughs> get a performance. Get little smile on your face, a little smirk there, <laughs> I see If you want that. to get the best performance you, you, you can, you're, you're going to be putting a violent array in your, in your solution. Well, I mean, I think you guys have got a good, good business. So give us an update on, on your positioning. One, obviously, yeah, how are you going to market? And what's the plans for this year? What's the, how's the business outlook for you guys? Well, um, our positioning is, is pretty straightforward. We're primary enterprise storage, and we're the only company that can really have a solid foundation on all three legs of performance, and performance that's sustained, as well as high availability and, and economics so that you can truly re replace disk with flash in your primary data layer. You know, the example I used to use when I used to be in the sales business, you used to go to a customer accounts and you know, call it the house on fire, the emergency room, yes. you know, triage. You say the house is on fire, you go to the first room first that's burning up, you want to save that room. Well, when you talk to customers for violin, what are the, what are the areas, that, I need you right here first. What, what, can you break us down, kind of sequence out the areas that you kind of hit first, uh, you know, to save, to save and or improve infrastructure? Sure, you know, the, the first would be a business critical application that you can directly tie to the bottom line of the company. So say you're a financial services company and the faster you can analyze some data to make the smartest trade, the more money that goes to your bottom line. It's obviously a business critical application. Violin absolutely needs to be in the mix for that. Um, everybody's trying to go the, the next you know, 50% of virtualizing their entire data center. The easy apps have been virtualized. Now the hard apps need to be virtualized. And to do that, the biggest roadblock is the storage IO bottleneck. And so Violin is, is making a lot of strides in there. So it's the performance issue. Well, it, it's, it's the point you made up before. It's, it's kind of yep. one of the biggest bottlenecks that you have to deal with. Yep. And we can open up that bottleneck And application in a big way. development heads don't want to virtualize those apps because they'll risk slowing them Well, around. actually, one of the interesting trends we're seeing is a lot more real large-scale production VDI initiatives. And part of the reason is because flash storage can make those actually painless. I saw you guys just had a big win there, right? Yeah, we, we, we've had a couple. There's a uh, university in the UK that decided to go all VDI for their student computer infrastructure. Uh, the largest air transportation um, services firm in the UK went all violin for, for their VDI infrastructure. So it's it's one of those things where now we can do things we couldn't do before. You know, and and that's that's kind of the, the, the secret to why violin's really being successful is we give enterprises the opportunity to do things that they couldn't do before because of technology roadblocks. And we're and we're getting we're getting through that. What do you like at the show here? So describe for the folks the vibe here. What's your takeaway from Oracle Open World? Well, so the keynote you've seen what's going on. I actually find, one of the things I find really interesting is that even though it's an Oracle show and Oracle's known as a software company, there's a lot of infrastructure and hardware discussion that goes on here. A lot of people that know what they're talking about, a lot of architects that look at the big picture. Um, in fact, you know, some of, the, some of the toughest questions we get are the guys that 
know the database, know the application layer, know the middleware layer, and know the hardware layer. And those guys, you know, those guys ask questions that tie all those things together. And those are those are the, the coolest people to have come by your booth and look at your product. Violin Memory Systems, great company. We're following them. They're right off 101. Uh, great leadership team in Don Basile, the CEO. Great, great aggressive company, but they know what they're talking about. Um, pioneering in Flash. Uh, Jack O'Brien, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate your time, and uh, congratulations on a very successful Oracle Open World, in the sense that the leads are just going to start flowing in. Even Larry <laughs> just endorsed your, your vision uh, uh, for Violin. Congratulations, and thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, John. Thanks, Dave. Okay, Thank we'll be right Jack. back with SiliconANGLE.TV, theCUBE, right after the short break with our next guest. Thanks, guys. That's great. Thanks.